pleasant good evening to you, Dominica, the Caribbean region, and the rest of the world, and compliments of the season to you. Lambie, you can hear us okay? Give us a thumbs up, please. And I am Simone Matthew, and we are here. I hope that you're in good spirits and you're in good health. So good evening, good evening, everyone. This is episode number 15 of Roots Connections on Q right here on the big station, Q95. Uh, this is a very important conversation because so many people's lives are being impacted by uh, the complete shutdown of the entertainment industry in Dominica. So I thought the best way to approach this particular topic is to have those who are uh, personally involved in the industry to join us. And tonight we're just going to take a look at two questions. What is the state of the entertainment service industries in Dominica? That is, what is the COVID reality uh, for the entertainment industry? Everyone who relies on the entertainment industry for their livelihood? And secondly, what can we all do to ensure that those who have worked for decades to build the entertainment and the service industries are not left out to dry with no plans for a new way forward in this new COVID-19 world. So let us say good evening and compliments of the season to our panel. How is everyone doing? If your mic is muted, you can go ahead and unmute and just say good evening to the audience. Yeah, good evening. Yes, hi, hi, hi. So we have with us uh, the King of Bouillon himself, Mr. Derek Rapides. We have media professional, uh, Mr. Uh, Richie Farrell. We have Mr. Ashma Peters, the son of the legend. We have DJ Rio and we have Miss Abea uh, with us as well, who just joined us. So Abea Israel is here. We're also expecting King Bob. So hopefully he will be joining us soon. So we have a full two hours of programming for you. But before we get started, let us say a pleasant good evening to our q 95 listeners at home and abroad. A good evening to our Facebook Live audience who are joining us on WISE QFM, as well as Push Past 10 on Facebook. Uh, don't forget to share the live, click the notification button to know when we go live. And we're, of course, looking forward to engaging with you on this this important conversation. So we're looking forward to hearing about your own COVID-19 reality as well and your suggestions for moving forward. Uh, good evening as well to Mr. G and the Q95 family, as well as Lambie on the console and Sherwin Norris, our engineer who ensures that we stay connected. So don't forget, if you missed any episode, you can always join on Q, jump on Q95DA.com uh, for all the past episodes of this and other programs. For example, last time we discussed the Pandora Papers and the implications for Dominica and the Caribbean. Caribbean region. So again, that website, q95da.com for more information. So again, let us thank the panel for joining us as we give uh, the quick introductions, just say um, who you are. And since we have only one lady in the house, we will go ahead and start with Miss Abia Israel. So Abia, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us who you are. All right. Good night. Greetings, everyone. And you are? Is she frozen? Okay, so let's, uh, uh, Rai, you can jump in while um, uh, Abia tries to come back on. Okay. All right. Greetings, everyone. Um, Derek Rapitas, want to give thanks and praise for another day. And um, of course, want to big up the Mosai for allowing us to have a session like this. I hope it will be um, fruitful and informative and, um, you know, take us to a higher level you know, as we seek to, you know, shed some light and, you know, inspire people as we talk. And of course, to bring out, um, you know, what we are going through, you know, at this time, you know, with uh, the edge of technology and the, the um, change in the way things are done, you know, so we hope we could have a, a good discussion and to bring some positive light on. 
Yes, absolutely. So we're talking about actionable steps this evening. This is not another conversation for conversation program, but we're talking actionable steps. So I hope everyone will have something to contribute. Uh, speaking of the Peters family, Ashma will come over to you and tell us who you are. Yeah, hi, good night to everyone. Yeah, my name is Ajmo Peters. I'm a musician, studio engineer, and music producer. Yes, very nice to meet you, Ajmel. Richie Farrell, a, a voice and a name we know very well from Q95. Just tell us a little bit about who you are. Yeah, I'm Richie Farrell. I am a media professional, um, artist, and a musician. Yes, nice to meet you. And last but certainly not least, uh, DJ Rio. Well, I'm Dylan Loder, a.k.a. DJ Rio from the vibrant community of Maho, so I'm a young entertainer in the entertainment business. Yes. Yes, uh, excellent. So hopefully um, Abia will be able to join us again. I think she might be having some internet connections. So again, I want to welcome the panel as we talk about the COVID reality on the ground and how do we move uh, forward. And you know, I thought it was important for this particular conversation to have various sectors of the entertainment industry. So we have DJ Rio, who's the DJ. We have the King of Buya from, of course, Buya Music. We have a music producer, uh, Mr. Ajmal Peters, and we have a media professional. We also have a, a Bia who's in reggae, and hopefully King Bob will be joining us from Soka, because I wanted to bring to the table all the voices that are being impacted. And also keep in mind that we reached out to the DFC as well as the Carnival Queen Show Committee, but they are not with us this evening. So as we get the program off and running this evening, I wanted to begin with you, Richie. You know, as a media professional, I thought we would get started with just the reality of COVID. So just kind of tell us about the statistics on the ground in terms of the number of vaccinations and just what we need to know as an update on COVID-19 in Dominica. Okay, uh, COVID, as you know, is a very <laughs> fluid situation global. Dominica is no exception. Um, before I go into the statistics, um, um, I can say from the, the feel on the ground in Dominica is um, some are for, some are against. And um, there are strong points on both sides. Um, so how this plays out is, is from a media perspective, um, will be quite interesting. But one thing stands out, um, and I'll be, I've been speaking with some um, you know, guys in the music industry about that, is that at some point we're going to have to understand COVID is not really going away, and we're going to need to um, adjust our lives, so to speak, um, with the new norm. So how, again, how that happens... Uh, <laughs> Will be interesting to um to watch. Uh, in terms of the statistics, um, as of Tuesday, uh, December seventh, uh, the number of new cases in Dominica, um, is at thirty thirty four. Uh, the number of discharges was seventy. The total active cases three hundred and ninety. The total COVID related deaths, unfortunately, was um, 42. Um, and that's, that's since the pandemic started, by the way, it started in March 2020 to now we have 42 deaths in total. The total recovered um, persons is 5,744 to date. Um, the total confirmed COVID 19 cases. It stands at 6,176. A number of tests conducted, which includes both the PCR, which is uh, 29,934, and the antigen, which is 82,660. That gives you a total of 112,594 to date. Uh, the number of people who have gotten the first dose of the vaccine is 29,064. And the, those who are fully vaccinated, so to speak, 27,115. 
So um, we can already see that some efforts are being made by people to actually get vaccinated for one reason or the other. They feel, um, um, I don't use the word compelled, but encouraged to get vaccinated. And I guess um, as the discussion rolls on, um, some of those reasons might come up. Yes, yes. Thank you for that, Richie. Thank you very much for that. So I want to go to each one of you and let us just talk about the reality for not just you, but for others that you see on the ground. Let us let us take a look at the reality before we get into what can be done for the entertainment, the music, uh, the service industry in Dominica. So Ra, I'd like to come over to you and just tell us about your COVID reality. Well, the COVID reality, really and truly, when I look at it, is a very tough one because to me, I mean, the coughing, the sneezing, and the sanitize, and all that part of it, and um, all the protocol, that's one aspect. But now, to me, the real thing is, uh, is the economic um, impact that it has. I mean, the, the whole economics is a serious game changer. And to me, there is where I really focus in. I mean, the coughing, the sneezing, and the disease, and the variants, and the vaccines, and all that is a whole story by itself. But now the real thing to me is the economics. I mean, it's like impact the musicians and them seriously. I mean, and not only the musicians, it impact the sports. You know what I mean? People that were making their money through that. I mean, the music industry, as it stands there, um, you know, is at a serious blow. I mean, we could talk about from, me personally, I could talk about from Hurricane Maria, mm -hmm. you know, and what I went through. But now, this one there, I don't know if it's icing on the cake or however, or silver sweets, I don't know how you may want to put it, but now, with that situation right now, it's very um, devastating right now, mm -hmm. economically. I mean, some people are um, kind of uh, smart and outsmart some people in um, doing certain techniques, you know, um, meaning that um, utilizing or taking advantage of the situation by the virtual, which some people were more... Um, first with you know so they they they, they kind of uh, grab it in, in a kind of a way and the story is so deep you know um we don't want to get into that but now you know some of them really escape with 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 that vibe with the virtual stuff you know some people you know they're fortunate enough to have escaped with that you know of course with some assistance here and there but the rest of the rest of the musicians you know the rest of them you know what they're doing because now um from a conversation heard you know earlier on that some musicians have to resort in finding another nine to five because there mm -hmm. are families to feed and um you know all that situation there and i mean so many um professional musicians you know went by you know um succumb to 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 that you know i just um was watching a thing there now i see Two people that were active in in the, in the music industry, that is um Robbie Shakespeare and you know Atta in Saint Martin. I was just browsing through and I realized you now Atta in Saint Martin. You know we do a lot of promotion and stuff like that for the bands. You know I don't know what was the case, but now you know I just saw it briefly, so I have to find out exactly what's happening. And you know um Robbie from Sly and Robbie Taxi Gang. You know he passed, so I don't know exactly what's happening. Before that, you know you had a few other people. Jamaican artists as well at past, you know, toots, you know. Mm -hmm. So now this this having a serious impact on the music industry. I mean, the the whole you know thing is changed. You know, the whole climate is changed. You know, the you know is 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 really devastating. I mean, and um, is is a real suffering going on. Uh, as I tell you before, as I heard before, um, there was a conversation going on and, you know, some DJs were called and some musicians were called to a meeting, from what I understand, um, by, I don't know if it's some government or the prime minister or whoever, I don't know, because so many of them have been called already. 
And mm -hmm. um, I don't know what's been happening, you know, what's going on. It look like some people are invited and some people are not. You know, yeah, and, and I want you know, and I want us to talk about that as well. That uh, meeting that was recently held, but and I and yeah, I because now the, the, the thing about it, I think they have a a, a list, you know, of of musicians and stuff like that. And apart from the list, yeah, I mean, I surely know certain people that they may quote um not so active or active or whatever they may want to say, you know, about those people, and um they know the contribution they have made and you know to me what's happening now is keeping them out of the whole conversation you know it's like to me what's happening mm -hmm. now is an effort by so many different people um to keep certain people out of the of, out of the business and it's, it's been done deliberately you know um is to keep them out of the conversation to keep them to actually um take them out of history and it's a serious effort done in that. And I mean, some people know the job that they're doing on that. And it's, it's really a shame. That's why the, the industry in Dominica, you know, um, the music industry and the musicians in Dominica, they suffer so much because, you know, um, I think it come in like a overused word, just like um, fusion, that togetherness and unity, you know, to me, it is, is I, I see that, you know, I don't know. Because I feel like, you know, like a stock record, I've been speaking about that for the, so, so many, so many different programs. I speak about that, that mm -hmm. the things that we need to put in place and stuff like that, you know, and um, when you have certain meetings and certain people that, you know, what you may call the stakeholders or whatever they may want to call them, um, they're not included in the conversation. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's a deliberate thing. I don't know if it's wickedness. I don't know if it's malice. I really don't know what to describe it, and somebody have to help me out on that. But I find, you know, uh, apart from the whole COVID kind of a situation, to me that even feels worse than the COVID itself. You know, right? So we have, so, so we, mm -hmm. we have a so lot. So I to personally talk about. looking at it is not only like um, wash your hands, sanitize, go and take your vaccine and all that. It's more than that. It's about right. a whole. Um, redoing about how business on the whole is going to be done and i don't think covid is going to go away just like that it's going to be with us because there's there's going to be all, always going to be a new variant because mm -hmm. that's that's the whole thing if you look at it carefully you'll see that's what's happening and right. um when you take your first job you get your second job you get a booster then you get another booster then we keep on boosting all the time i i think by by the end of the day some people will be looking like a greater by the time they finish getting the, the amount of vaccine they're supposed to get. I mean, everybody have their opinion of what take it or do take it. And everybody have a right. They have the human right to decide if they want to take it or not. You know, so that is a complete different conversation from the economic suffering that we are facing right now. Right. And I, I want, and I want to hear everybody's COVID reality, but I, I think at the, the base of this conversation, and, and I want you guys to tell me if you think that um, this is correct, but I think many times that the, the real issue is that entertainment is not considered a career in Dominica. So I kind of just want to hear your opinion on that, and then we're going to come back to everyone sharing on their COVID-19 um, reality. So, so uh, DJ Rio, what what do you think? Is, is, is entertainment considered a, a real career path in Dominica? Not at all. Not at all. Not at the moment. Not at all. Not at all. Right. At all. So it's not given priority. No, government give the priority to entertainers. They watch us as the last figures on the food chain in Dominica. Right. So they don't pay us mind. Mm -hmm. Ashna, what do you think? Musicians yeah. are mid -beat. Yeah. Um, I would argue DJ Rio is like the the entertainers are not taken seriously. Um, I mean, as a business, they don't see music as a business in Dominica. It's like like a hobby thing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's like time to change that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Richie. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I um, there's a lot I could say on that, <laughs> and 
I have had a little one, two with um I think even Rio some time ago, but recently there with the, the legend for our Peters on that. And also um a guy named um Hilton. Um but it's a tricky question. Um with an easy answer, but there's a lot that could be said. But I'll just say yeah, I, I agree with the sentiments of um, my brother Ashmal and, and my brother Rio. Um, really and truly, with music is is despite it being a multi-billion-dollar industry, I I don't know how. <laughs> I I don't know how it's not being taken seriously. It's like it's almost borderline in insane because it is that it, it is next you have pharmaceuticals and medicine which is one of the biggest industries in the world is, is in the billions and then right next to that you have the music industry <laughs> and then you have sports you have agriculture that everybody needs food right um but then there's this alienation of music here and sports you don't really hear those topics not even in the news if i have to speak from a media perspective you hardly hear or get reports of whether it be gospel artists or secular artists um, making the news because really and truly the avenues are not there for them to to pop locally so to speak to even make the news the local news so like i said there's a lot that could be said but i i agree i agree that um we are we are seen as the the guys just with amazing talent or the women with amazing talent and skill um but they, they only call us when they're bored. <laughs> you know, they call the, the Rios and, and you know, the, the, the Toph and the Ajmal and the Ra and the Abia and the Asad when they're bored. You know, that's when they call us. Like, we bored, so we need, you know, make us dance. You know? uh, but, but there's more to music than, than just that, bro. Like, there's so much more. There's so much economic benefit for all parties involved. And mm -hmm. it's, it's for, to me... In 2021, it's a little bit crazy that on a national level, we have not created the systems to, to one, create that kind of industry in Dominica in 2021. It, it's a little bit for me personally, as an as a artist, as someone in music, I just find that we need to do better than that when it comes to yeah music. yeah we, thank you so much for that thank you so much for that richie abia you're back hopefully the internet is working a little better and i think uh daryl bobby you just signed on i think i can see that you're on but we're not seeing your video so you may want to turn uh, your camera on are you I'm there bob on. i'm on yes I, i'm not yes. sure where where I, have, I am currently i had to join you i'm not sure the lighting is the best but um i'm happy to be on anyway and, okay um... <laughs> okay well give it give it a try and and yeah. then um if not uh we can always keep you um off camera because it works better for the facebook live uh when you're on but abia yeah. so tell us do you think um the the entertainment is seen as an industry what has been your covid19 experience your ability to earn an income as an entertainer as a singer tell us about it okay yes let me do apologize for earlier on uh, I hope you can hear me clear now. So my experience has been, <laughs> how to say, in Dominica, I feel like we've always missed the love and the actual respect and quality that is needed to uplift our, our artists and our musicians, right? So, um, uh, Richie was just speaking, and I could just yeah, speak to him all over. Of course, why would I do that? Yes, so so he was speaking, and I could sort of relate to to what he was saying. Um, for me, I feel like we just we have a world of so yes, I can do that. However, I saw opportunities to access the world.
Yeah, you, you're with yes. us. You may yes. Go ahead. Yes, you hear me now? Okay, yes, so I will ahead. I will look up the, the, the video because it messes. Yes, yeah, so I saw an opportunity to access the world in, in a way that independent artists may not have had that opportunity before. Because um we can lament on the limitations of, of how Dominica is and and you know I really love the country Dominica, so I always I, you know I it's hard for me to just concentrate on negativity concerning Dominica, but I saw an opportunity to access the rest of the world, to look at where the world markets are for the sort of music that I create. I took time out uh, during the COVID uh, lockdown to understand the business of music and how do I market my music to my target audience. Yes, Dominica is my target audience for sure, for sure. But however, we do have a world out there that even through digital means, we can access these people. So I saw, I saw, I saw the lockdown and the COVID thing as, as an opportunity to educate myself, uplift my knowledge on the business, and also find time to access those people in other countries across the ocean. And, and I felt like so far it's been working. I'm still learning about the music business. I'm still a student <laughs> of the music business, but I see I see um, returns, Simone. I have seen mm -hmm. returns with that. And and Mr. Rap Peters, he was telling us, you know, some people were able to manage digital shows and whatnot very nicely. And that is true because, you know, those who have the systems and the whole setup, they're able to maneuver through uh, this live streaming that is done perfectly. And they had that opportunity to do that. So with us today, I just feel like we need to find, okay, what does music look like in 2021, 2022? Uh, mm -hmm. How does it look like and see a benefit in kind of being independent artists, just bursting through the digital markets and reaching mm -hmm. radio stations out there, even without uh, uh, even without uh, being signed to any major label, because he's right, Richie is right. Music is a billion dollar industry. Mm -hmm. So that's what I saw, Simone. I saw opportunities, opportunities. Right, very, develop. Yeah, yeah, very well said. Uh, DJ Rio, if you can come back with us, I think um, the DJs in Dominica, uh, uh, the group that probably got hit the hardest and you were telling us about, you know, guys looking for jobs, looking for regular jobs. So just tell us, kind of just give us a picture of what life was like before COVID and what your reality on the ground is like right now. Well, life before COVID was actually good. The country was good. Gigs were coming in. I was getting a lot of airplay on the outside, making a lot of income. Then COVID hit and it just crippled the DJ industry mm -hmm. see, as a DJ. So as it haven't had outside, we had to go virtually now to try and give back to our fans. So that's why we have been virtually Facebook, Instagram, giving back to our fans because it doesn't have outside. And in that way, we don't make income, but we are just doing it out of love. So basically that's why I see it. So if we don't have a day-to-day -day job, we suffer, that's it for us. Mm -hmm. So we have to look for a day-to-day -day job and nine to five right. to survive in America. Absolutely. Right and, and, and Ajmal, I'm going to come back to you to find out what you've been doing, but I see King Bob is with us and we're very happy that you're joining us, uh, our virtual Calypso King, our 2018 Calypso Monarch. So, so Bob, tell us about the COVID reality in Dominica as you see it. I think you're muted. Let's, yes, yep. you can, uh, I forgot my mic was muted. That's, that's one of the things we have to get used to, unmuting, unmuting our mics. <laughs> Um, basically, I think COVID, I'm, I'm listening to everybody on the panel and I, I, I everybody, yes, this thing is a harsh reality. Um, it has come and it came, it crept up on us and it has really transformed the, the industry, the, the entertainment, the music industry. But the question is, is it providing opportunities for new things? And if I'm to answer that question, I'd say yes. 
Um, not only because I am a virtual Calypso monarch, but even before I became a virtual Calypso monarch, I saw the opportunities that COVID brought about. We have to be online. Being online expands our audience tremendously. We can now perform to audiences in Germany. We can now perform to audiences in France, in Africa, at the same time, yes, simultaneously. And that is important. We can now have our shows sold, our tickets sold online. So it, is, it has provided an opportunity that we never knew about before. And yes, of course, even the DJs, uh, from the time COVID came about, there was a surge, a massive increase in the number of, of entertainers doing stuff online. And that is because everybody's trying to see how they can adjust to the new opportunity. But what I would like to say in general to all of us artists, I think there's something that is working for me. If we are to get ourselves knowledgeable about the industry, find out, especially now, it has, it has transformed so drastically. Now there's every reason that we should pause for a cause and learn something about the industry. If we are to get organized, and we are to face this industry head on, we will see results. Our artists, and I don't want to say in Dominica, but there are many artists in the region. Um, we were never taught about the music industry, just like we were never taught about banking at school. And hence the reason why many people do not really have a, a, a savings and so on. Things we were not taught at a nascent stage are things that we are suffering from right now. So, but it's never too late. As a matter of fact, we're involved in a digital industry so we have to inform ourselves about what is happening in the industry. We have to tell ourselves that, yo, we need management. We need a team. We need to show up on time. We need to present ourselves properly. Then it comes down to our expression. Our expression has to be marketable. We have to know what audience we're going after. We have to know if that audience is large enough to sustain us. And we have to send our material out to the people that matter. So it's a whole... Uh, like a paradigm shift and unless we can understand that we won't see results so i understand everybody's cry your cry is my cry too but unless we get serious and understand the industry we wouldn't move forward this is a fact there's no cry there's the, and even so there isn't anything that a government can do for you if you're not serious to take advantage of opportunities because you're the person that's supposed to be responsible for taking that information to them and tell them, hey, I need an enabling environment so I can take advantage of that. I need, I need, I need the subject taught at school, at the college, so I can go and do a six-month course on, on social media marketing, you understand? On music management, on recording, so that our recording quality can improve. We are to take those recommendations to our, our policymakers so that we can, we can take, we can better, we can become better informed, we can become better trained, so that we can take advantage of opportunities that exist in the world. And we are part of the world. So that's what I want to say. We just need to get serious. We need to step back a bit, understand the industry. We see the Trinidadians are doing quite well and the Jamaicans. That is because they are much better organized. They have management team. They have publishers. You know, they are very well organized, most of them. Most of them that we hear all the time, every year, you know, the Patrice Roberts, the Marshall Montano. These people, when you call a number, you don't get to talk to them. If you call my number, you get me. <laughs> maybe I know what I'm doing to an extent but I cannot continue like that you understand so I'm saying all of that to make us understand that what our problem really is is that we have to learn some things about the industry we, and we have to get the right team the right people on board even if we ourselves have to train them and expose them to the opportunities the knowledge out there so that we can take advantage of it and that is our problem in the region and I know that Thank you. Yeah, and, and I think you, you raised some very good points, uh, uh, Bob. And it's for me, this program is about sharing what we know so that others in the industry can benefit from it. So, Ashman, I want to come to you so you can tell us what did you have to change from what you were doing previously in this new COVID-19 world? Uh, well, nothing really, to be honest with you. Um, as a gigging musician i mean we couldn't do any gigs so basically um we just had to just stay there you understand but as a studio engineer and a music producer i could still do my work and you know get everything done so basically it didn't really have an effect on me right. but um as a gigging musician like playing outside 
yes, um, it really had an effect on him because he couldn't get anywhere and he's got cancer and he couldn't make that amount of money and stuff. But as a producer and engineer, yeah, it didn't really do me anything, really. I actually um, master my craft, kind of master my craft better, um, do some research, you know, meditate on different things. So, yeah, that is what I, I could really see. Um, yeah, excellent, really excellent. Yeah. Really good to hear that. You know, and the way I see it, we have had two years to figure this out and many industries have permanently moved online. So, you know, for those of us who had, have had the blessings of having our industry move online where we can work from home, we should continue to be grateful. But what about our brothers and sisters who cannot move completely online, right? Do we throw our hands up and say, oh, well, so sad? You know, these are our brothers and sisters who have worked for decades to build these industries. And this is their livelihood, the only livelihood many of them have known for many years, right? So, and the other thing is that, uh, you know, we have to think of this conversation beyond simply saying, should we have cannibal, yes or no? It, it is beyond a simple knee-jerk reaction with a quick yes or no. We, you know, we need to have a deeper conversation, which is what I hope that we're doing here this evening to create a vision for entertainment and the service industry that accepts, like so many of us have already said this evening, that in one form or another, COVID is here to stay. So instead of simply saying yes or no, let us stop and think about the countless people, their children, for example, who are being impacted. And let us look at some of the other vendors when we say cancel cannibal. So for the panel, I want us to kind of just brainstorm. You've been in this industry for a while. What are some of the other vendors, the other industries that depend on the entertainment industry? And I know, for example, DJ Rio, you can get this conversation started because your mom is a hairdresser so when we have no events the hairdressers suffer so i just want us to kind of brainstorm as to the other industries that suffer because there's no entertainment in dominica well first off as i said my mom has a hair salon so the hairdressers the barbers the nail techs the people who sell clothing all these people are impacted because you don't have no outside. People have nowhere to go. So why do you come and do your for for a weekend and weekend you at your home? Or why do you go to the store to buy new clothes and weekend you at your home? It's always at your home. You're always inside. So basically, the all these people are impacted. The people who are not really impacted are the people in the supermarkets the pharmacies, that's a must. So people must eat, so they are not impacted, they do not feel it. And the bus drivers, people must go to work. So they do not really feel it, but the other people, so businesses are failing because of this. Some small businesses have to close because schools are not selling, yeah, are not doing, and nail techs too, all this. But Absolutely. Yeah, it, Richie, any, any, any other industries come to mind in terms of when entertainment shut down, who else is impacted? Yeah, well, you, I mean, yeah, you, you would expect that. I agree with uh, my brother, DJ Rio. Um, you know, the services industry on a whole, eh, I think, is decimated by the fact that the entertainment part of society, you know, is not functioning. Um, they intertwine because when you have entertainment or activities in which people have to physically go to a place, um, it, it compels them to do things in, in preparing for that. For example, it's the same thing Rio said, getting your hair done, um, your, the nail techs, um, buying shoes, buying, cause you want to have, you want to have a deadly Adidas or a deadly Puma or a deadly Nike. <laughs> When you go in and see Daryl Bob perform, you don't just want to go and see Daryl Bob perform anyhow. So, um, you know, if we have to take it apart from the, the going to the jam part, if you have to take it to, um, you know, the vendors, um, a lot of people focus on when you talk about vending, 
is only when tourists come on the bay front on, on Woodbridge Bay Port. But no, um, vending is more than that. Um, the people who you see by the side of the road with their little restaurants or their little snack heads, these are vendors. These people are affected as well in terms of the amount of product or food that people would consume and, and stuff like that is reduced because like, you're more at your home on your own property and what you have in your home is what you'll eat. You, there's no reason for you to be walking about if there are no activities happening around the place. So, I mean, all these things, it's like a domino effect. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, according to, to the legend, Rap Peters, what he said earlier on, uh, the economic impact, I mean, yo, bro, the, the, it's real. It is real. It is real. Mm -hmm. Feeling it in Dominica. To, to say that we're not feeling it, even if we're looking for, we are very optimistic people eh, in Dominica. But even if we're looking for optimism and, and so on, we cannot, we cannot not say that there's no economic impact, bro. Like it, it is real. It is really real, and I feel it for people who depend on us to provide entertainment. They're not getting that to make their little daily bread and their little, you know, it, it's 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 hard, man. It's hard. Right, right. So, so, Ra, I want to come to you. So, we're looking at the broader picture because sometimes I think we have a very myopic view that it's only the entertainers who are suffering, the DJs, the, the singers, um, those who are directly in the industry. But now we're realizing that the impact is a lot broader. So, so you know, let's um, chime in on this conversation, the overall picture of who is impacted when we say, for example, Cancel Carnival. Well, as I say, um, that thing um, affecting every nook and cranny, every, every area you touch in, you know, the guy just talk about, um, the hairdressing and so, but no, you know, we have the vibes. It's like, um, you don't need to be going out for you to look good or for you to dress up. You know, sometimes you hold me a dress up and feel good. You know, you need to cut your hair still, you know, even though you're not ready going to perform or anything like that. But, um, what I would say is that for instance, um, there's some big stuff going on. Uh, like on the bayfront and on the promenade and stuff like that very nice very good and i really applaud those people that are doing that but now what i see is that just like how you know they have the creole festival in there and they have the vendors trying to make a dollar the kind of money they take from the vendors before they could really touch something for themselves i think is very disheartening you know it's almost like when you um importing you know, and you have to pay customs that amount of money before you ever start to touch something. Sometimes you went to take a loan and you went and put your stuff. Then, you know, you have to pay so, so much in the customs and you haven't even touched nothing yet. Then you have to look at all your overheads and stuff like that. By the time you finish, you wonder who you're working for. So same thing like I, I, I see what's happening on, on the Bayfront. There's a lot of little bars down there, you know, and I wonder who they're trying to sell to. Because now everybody, you know, is like pure moppers. Everybody looking to go down there and maybe hustle a partner to get a drink or something like that. Because the economic, you know, the, the economic vibe is not there. The economy is not really rolling, you know. Money is not in people's pockets so they could say, well, they could make a wrong of drinks. You know, this one make a wrong of drinks, that one make a wrong of drinks, you know. I mean, when you have to check it out, the skills. You know, because I hear Bob talking about you know, in college and all that and to study, that's very nice. But now we had a lot of um, uh, technical people like the, in the building industry, um, you know, your electricians, plumbers, and you just name it, automotive, you know, that used to be in the technical college. There is no more. If you have to look at it now, all our little change that we have here that's supposed to be circulating and for us to be getting little money, that's going out because most of them people, they are imported. I mean, it's true that some of us travel and we go out type to get jobs, you know what I mean? And this guy from Mao, we should know a lot of people from Mao end up going places like in the States, St. Thomas and those kind of places there, right? And they're builders and um, um, technical people. They make a lot of money out there. But no, we never replenish those people, you know, right now. We, 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 we in a sad situation there right now because no, there's not that training of what I know is I, I stand to correction up in the college 
you know, we have people learning um, the, the building trades and stuff like that and all those areas. We have pure imports happening there right now. So, no, the money is not in the local pockets, you know. Most of the money is being shipped out because I said already, you know, two things that we were good at um, exporting is people and our money. Because now, if you check just before the election, and I want to go political, but now, just before the election, you had a lot of different um, people coming in. And COVID didn't even start to, didn't even kick in yet, right? And they were making the bulk of the money when they come and perform for whoever it was, whoever political party they were performing for, right? And the local musicians stay right there, and they were just getting like, if you sad to see, but to me is waka imagine, you check crumbs, but that's fall on the ground there, and and they still working it until you want to eat that after. I find to myself that's a serious insult, and um. We need to check that. So, you know, if you're checking about, um, you know, we need to get training and all that, that's very nice. I mean, I really applaud that because I've been saying that there for, for, for the longest while. So it come like as if it's a, a, a brand new idea, a repackage and, 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 you know, change the package and so, but it's the same contents in there, you know, and be talking about that for the longest while. And now we, as the musicians have to, and musicians and entertainers or whatever, because you have DJs, all that falling under one category, that um, we need to really care for one another, you know, instead of just like talking, talking, because you now, of course, we talk about, oh, we have to get um, up to date with the whole data kind of a thing and the computerized thing. And, you know, because that's what it turned to right now. You know, you're not going to be doing any kind of a thing where you're going to fill a stadium like that. You have to look like exporting your image and his data and his all those kind of a things. Uh, and you, you said it right, Simon, that, what about those people that not savvy like me? I, I don't know much about a computer. I, every time I have to go and learn my ABC, I have to get somebody to come and show me something there. But, you know, remember, you know, um, age coming up, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For everybody, once you're born, they ask you how old you are. So, no, it's not me alone. You know, so people may <laughs> laugh and think that, but they go in the same way too, you know? Um, that the age going up, so now you have to get a core. And I mean, you're never old to learn neither, eh? but I prefer the first one. You're never young, too young to earn. I like to earn very early because now if I didn't do certain things and put certain things in place right now, I, I, I don't know if I'll ever be able to do that because for the youths and them right now, they're in a real sad situation because now the whole economic things is changed right now. Yeah. The way people used to go to work is changed. You know, I remember my brother coming from um, England years ago and he said, you know, I work from home. I'd be like, yeah, you work from home. To me, that was like far-fetched. I, I never thought, mm -hmm. I never imagined that working from home. You know, then then when the vibes hit me, you know, and I see well COVID and then people working from home and all that kind of a stuff, you see the whole change, you know, the whole change that's happening right now. So we have to see ways, and as Bob rightfully said, it's teamwork. But now, are we ready to work as a team? You know, are we just saying we're supposed to work as a team? And when people, you know, stretching out and asking for help, people docking them mm -hmm. and, you know, they they, they 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 pushing your side and have things to say you know and um creating that whole um how you call it generation um divide you know you know we 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 we, we you know need to really catch ourselves and understand exactly what's happening there yeah, you know? so I think I think I think what you're saying is that COVID-19 has exacerbated some of the issues that were already there, such as folks not willing to work together. But I also think that we're seeing that not just the entertainers and the entertainment industry is impacted. So again, we have to have a deeper conversation uh, uh, that involves the other sectors that are impacted when the entertainment industry is shut down, right? So again, do we just simply throw our hands up and look away while thousands of people suffer and see no hope for the future? And Bob and Abia, I want to come to you guys on this particular question because we're supposed to be a Christian nation, right? We pride ourselves in Dominica as being a Christian nation, right? And that teaches us that even if we personally might be doing well because now our jobs are online, you know, we have secure incomes, we should also be concerned about those who have been out of work for two years. So what are your thoughts on that, uh, 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 Bob, uh, Abia? What are your thoughts on that? You're muted, Bob. Let's see. Yeah, uh, 
well, I guess maybe maybe Queens first, and uh, Abia, you can go first. <laughs> All right, thanks. Yes, um, Simon, I agree. I agree that there are definitely people who might be left behind in such a, an environment like this, and I, I I hear I hear that cry from Mr. Peters because I have met these people. You know, I've spoken to a few artists. Even well, Bob knows we 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 do calypso together. Even through the calypso season, what I've been trying to do is to really ask you know certain artists because honestly, Simone, when when you have a real good team at the back of you as a singer, your duty is just to learn the song and sing, honestly. Mm -hmm. But um, in a world like today, I have to be the singer, the writer, part producer manager you know we have to be so many things in one person so it's a lot to take on so in my own little space we do have persons that we are linking with that we are trying to share information with that we are trying to get information from so we do have people you know in in dominica in the entertainment arena we're trying to get we're trying to link with and we have been we have been so when i tell you uh, little people behind us giving us ideas and whatnot this comes from not just my husband and myself it comes from other advice from other artists and entertainers in dominica as well but yes i also agree we have to unite we have to unite i i see there is a great need great 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 need for helping each other i see the the trinidadian artists you know, regardless of the team they have behind them, they bring on other artists on stage so that everybody knows each other. If you have, um, and we have, we have a few who did it here, even in Dominica, they've brought on artists on their show. Um, well, here today we have Bob who has brought on artists on his live stream to help, you know, to help these artists to connect with the outside world. Maybe they're not able to, to do it and they don't know how to do it. Um, it's a tough road, Simon. It's tough, you know. <laughs> but mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I, I think huh, the best, yes, the best we can do is definitely unite and share. And that, that's why I commend you tonight for having this forum, uh, another means of sharing. I really appreciate that. So thank you for having us. And yeah, that's that's basically what I have to say about this. Yeah. Uh, so, so, Bob, so yeah, thank you, Abia. So, Bob, I, I want you to chime in on two topics. We are a Christian nation. We should care that those in the entertainment industry, as well as other sectors that rely on the entertainment industries, the beauticians, the cosmetologists, the restaurants, even the gas stations. Because let's face it, when there are more events, more people have to fill up their gas to go to, I don't know, Grand Bay, to go to Capuchin, to go to Scott's Head for an event, right? So, so what are your thoughts that well, we as a Christian nation need to do more <laughs> and also the importance of bringing on other people? Because I know, for example, Tasha P is joining you soon at, at yeah. a, an event in New Jersey and Houston. So your thoughts? Yeah. Well, first of all, um, I see you put a lot of emphasis on Christian nation. But what I want to say is that I recognize that we have such a very diverse group here. In this very group, we have Christian, we have Muslim, we have Rastafarian. Well, God-fearing, God-fearing. <laughs> and I want to make the bold, I want to make the bold assumption that we are all, all the religions, we are all people who fear, who fear the master of the universe, whatever we call him, and that we are, our job is to look after each other. We are every, we have each person's brother's keeper. So moving on from that, um, I, think, I think the whole idea of looking after each other is wonderful because none of us are, you remember the story of Robinson Crusoe? We learned that in primary school. We live in this world and none of us are alone. I remember saying that to my best friend who had given up most of his life to substance abuse. And I told him, yo, you know, it doesn't matter what you do, you know, you have to remember that we're, you're not in the world alone. You know, you have to be careful. Your decisions, you, you, may, you may feel like you're satisfying yourself, but you are really hurting others. And our whole life is surrounded like that. You know, whatever we do, we have to look out for each other. So in the earlier part of the discussion, when you brought up the point of how do we go about combating this impact of the COVID-19, the first thing that pops up in my head was collaboration. Because the thing is, there are different artists who are probably better established. They have more resources than others. 
maybe the mercantile community might might trust them a little more and sponsor them and you know you you don't hold every or hold everything for yourself you know you open it up you know you invite ra like the other day um showdown mask camp ra was the, the headline artist on showdown mask camp show um a couple of fridays ago and that was wonderful i cannot imagine myself going through the, the rest of my career without seeing that again i have to see that again and i also you know? have to commend you guys because daddy chess was one of your yes um, highlighted yes. and he's from a different camp so it shows right. unity right so the point is we have to we have to collaborate even in our music we have to start to open up ourselves to ideas from each other so that we can raise the quality of our music the quality of our writing the quality of our rhythm the quality of our lyrics i think it's by bringing in others and creating that synergy that we can address that problem so there's no doubt on my mind that um it can happen but we just have to agree to work together ra said it you know many times People agree, yes, we're going to do this thing together. And then when you check a man, a man docking you, man, right, right, use it to me. And it's true. It is very true. I think the main element there that is missing, and don't forget COVID-19 has provided that opportunity for us, but we don't, we, we're not, some of us are not necessarily seeing it. And unless we take it seriously, we wouldn't take advantage of the opportunity. But the main thing I noticed there is that the element of trust is missing among us. We always feel if I do a song with Mr. Mr. will take my song and he will do something with it or he will tell people it's not our song, it's his song. Or if he makes some money, he will not share it. The element of trust is lacking among my people and, we, and in every industry, you know, not just the entertainment industry, in every industry, that element of trust it does, does not exist. And that is a serious hindrance to our development as a people in every sector that we are involved in, every sector. I cannot even trust somebody to show up on time. I cannot trust somebody to manage my money for me. Yo, what kind of society is that? So our, our, the answers to our questions are right there before our face, you know, but I think we're not necessarily taking it seriously. This is what it is, you understand? But unless we can understand how artists collaborate meaningfully, we will not be able to address this thing. I would like to see more artists on the Carly XP show. Carlin XP has really established herself pretty well, and I would like to see more budding artists on her show. If, you, if, if, I, if I see a great act, I might refer that act to somebody over in Trinidad. The person may want to do something with them and so on. So one thing leads to the next. And unless we can address that and see the opportunities, and I would really like to raise the discussion where we don't just complain of what COVID-19 has done, but let us see how we can adapt. Mm -hmm. Because in life is the, 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 the fittest that really survive, you know. How do we adapt to the situations? Yes, we have the virtual shows. Okay, we need to, we need to collaborate more. So at least if every week there's a, 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 a virtual show, then probably you might see one or two artists rotating on that same show with the main artist. Let us encourage more of that. Let us talk to the, um, how do we talk to the, the service, the, the internet service providers of, to make it more affordable for us to have more of those events. Do we have a music in the, do we have a, a musicians association? Yes, we do. Are we going to put questions to them? Are we going to call and ask for a meeting and say, yo, these are X, Y, and Z we would like to address. So let us get strategic. Let us get yes. strategic for one. Yes, yes. Instead of I, staying and back and, and, and allowing ourselves to shed too much tears about the situation that we're in. But I, 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 am, I am very, I feel for everybody, you know, I'm telling you. And anybody who approached me and say, Bob, I would like you to do that with me. Simon, for the first time in my career, I've been playing music since I'm 14. And for the first time in my career, I have performed with a, live with a Bouillon band. And that was this weekend. These guys approached me and said, Bob, we need your talent on our band. We're doing a special virtual show. And we want you to, to perform with us. And I was, I was elated. It wasn't about money for me. They offered me something. It wasn't exactly what I normally perform for, but I saw the bigger picture in what these guys wanted to do. So it's collaboration. And any one of them who call me, I'm going to go in there and raise the level of their performance. I'm going to go and practice with them and put the music together to make it make sense. And at least do a 15, 20 minute set with them and see where it goes. So we all have something to offer. Let us work together. Let us see, let us, let us discuss and see how we can do something that is that can raise the bar of our discussion, of our output as artists in the industry. And that includes DJs as well. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, and so you're moving us very nicely into the next section of the program, Bob, which is our actionable steps. What can we do? But Ashmal, before we go there, I just want to know, with everything being online now, have you, has your business increased? Have, have the people that you that are coming to work with you, um, is a lot of the music now being created only for the online format, moving away from maybe CDs because the world is going digital? So just kind of tell us what uh, music production is like right now in this COVID-19 world. Well, um, as you rightly said, right now we're moving to the online distribution vibes. So right now, I think it's kind of, um, since the COVID came about, as you mentioned, is like, we things kind of changed, you know? Um, we moved from, from that um, CD kind of survives to that online distribution, I it's like, it's like it, it just it just working better right now. And I think um, for the online is like I got more opportunities to work with different people. Um, you know, I mean, COVID had some bad things to it, but also that's some good things. You understand? And that was only good things. It's like it it kind of um, it, it 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 opened new vibes. Basically, you know, working with different people, working with different artists, and they know about my business for the online vibes and whatever. So basically, that that's what I could see, you know, through distribution. Yeah. Yeah, and, and tell us the importance of social media and what you do. Um, promoting the business and basically more promoting the vibes we earn through online distribution. We earn something because, as I as I said before we can't really play anywhere. Mm -hmm. So through the online distribution, we kind of making some kind of income. Mm -hmm. uh, also, um, apart from the online distribution, we have merch. So it's like the merch kind of brings some income as well. So yeah, the merch, yeah, the online distribution, um, those other things like that kind mm -hmm. of help us during those times, understand? Yeah, and have you been able to collaborate with anyone outside of Dominica, produce any music for, folks outside of Dominica? Yes, I did. I did some work with some artists outside there. And currently I'm working on a rhythm and this is going to be, um, I'm going to be collaborating with different artists outside there um, mm -hmm. around the Caribbean. So you'll, you'll hear about it. <laughs> yeah, excellent, excellent. Yeah. So happy for you. And I think it's great to see that one aspect of music and entertainment is absolutely thriving. And that yeah. is the, the producer part of it, because again, everything is online. So you're able to yeah. work with someone no matter where they are in the world. But let us yeah. kind of move the discussion along. And I know it is 9 p.m. now, and I, I promise we're going to take your phone calls and I'm going to jump on the Facebook Live. We have a very active Facebook audience, as always. So we're grateful for that. But but let me know if you agree with, with this. And Richie, I want to come over to you. But I think two recent revelations have made the whole idea that Carn Carnival 2022 is going to be canceled a greater pill to swallow. So I kind of want to have a discussion about this. I want to hear your thoughts about this the christmas village which stretches from people's park and spanning the entire length of the bayfront which is going to include music drinks eating entertainment and it's even going to include the tourists who are coming via the cruise ships so so richie tell us about this uh kind of this christmas village how many uh how many for example tents how many buildings what is the scope of the christmas village that has recently opened on the bayfront i'll be honest with you i i, I do not know the exact um amount of stalls that have been set mm -hmm. up i can tell you that the whoever they put in charge of the um the arrangement uh i'll give them some kudos they did a good job <laughs> As far as juxtaposing that to the fact that Carnival has been cancelled, I don't know if you want me to comment on that as well. Yes. Okay. Um, my view on that, and I, there may be some people opposed to the whole idea, but my view on that, if you, could, if you can have a Christmas village and, and have these activities going on, um, in a controlled environment, and you're saying that that it can be done, and you're actually doing it, then 
couldn't the same thing be done for carnival couldn't carnival be stationed and um based on the the, the environment you provide the necessary limitations um maybe make it in groupings because you need a large space and um have different events within the same the same area for example the um uh, world Grail music festivals um what do they call it food court or they used to call it that or festival village that kind of a concept we call it a carnival village there are, there are many like bob said there are, there are many ways to approach music especially now uh, the fact that you have to be innovative and all of that is not only in terms of um increasing your skill set um and 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 your craft but even in the organization of the event i think if you could do a christmas village um i i personally am not really opposed to that mm -hmm. then canceling carnival completely was probably a bad idea because you you're showing us that you can do this in a controlled environment just do the same thing with carnival at least some of us would would get get some income rolling rather than just canceling the event entirely mm -hmm. so that's just my personal view on that but um um in terms of the 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 christmas village i wouldn't say I'm, I'm opposed to it in particular because i think like ross said covid is here to stay if we have to get all scientific you know covid is an influenza bro you know mm -hmm. who is an influenza when last you hear flu flu has been eradicated <laughs> you know Thank you. influencers don't just disappear they are there they evolve all right, so we have to learn to live with COVID. We have to adapt. Uh, this is the planet we're on. You know, another pandemic is going to happen. Some people may not want to hear that. It may frighten them, but the truth is the, uh, the planet has thousands of viruses that just haven't evolved yet. That hasn't become transmissible to humans. But you don't know they're there, but, but they're there. The time just hasn't come for it to just happen. So right now we have COVID, so everybody's frightened. <laughs> about COVID, but this is one of many to come, you know, in our lifetime, we could experience another pandemic. But yeah. specifically, you know, the Christmas village, I'm just saying, yeah, you can have that, but carnival could have happened to maybe on a smaller scale or, or, or in that same controlled setting, but to cancel it off completely. And then you have the, again, another economic fallout for that season. It, it's it's i don't think it may, may probably was the best idea yeah i wonder I, simon if you will allow me i wonder I yes i was coming to you bob because because <laughs> before you chime in because the reason i brought up this point is because and as this is for both you and ra i've been monitoring saint kitts carnival on facebook for weeks now saint kitts has a completely full package of carnival the one difference is kitticians were willing to get vaccinated so both saint kitts and miami carnival it's, it was an enclosed environment vaccinated people only and what that says to us is that kitticians care they see carnival as beyond just the fun aspect of the jump up and the celebration they see it as an economic opportunity for everyone who's impacted right because carnival is a business so in the same way we are allowing this you know christmas village in an uncontrolled environment so there's no way and i think the the maximum if i i remember correctly from last year the maximum for calypso was what 190 so there was there's no way you can control the amount of people going on the bay front but if we did a smaller scale like richie was just suggesting and have it in maybe one of the parks that is closed off vaccinated people only like st kitts and miami we have options, right? So, so chime in, Bob. Let's hear what you have to say. Well, I, I'm not very optimistic about the idea of the the bubble carnival, mm -hmm. um, especially in Dominica. Um, we still have um, the percentage of vaccinated persons are, is not very attractive at all. Right. So it means that out of that, uh, nearly thirty thousand people, not all of them are carnival lovers most definitely mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we're still not at the stage that a country like um st kitts is at because i think the the, the government in st kitts and they they have been a bit 
they have been much more aggressive in terms of the vaccinations and so on. And I, I want to boldly applaud our government for at least giving people, not making it mandatory as 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 harsh as Senkit has done. Mm -hmm. I think it's a I think it's a matter of it should be a matter of choice. A lot of people are afraid to have the discussion and send you know state their views about that. But mm -hmm. I think um, the vaccination thing should be a matter of choice. Let people choose. Um, mm -hmm. But in St. Kitts, it has been pretty much imposed on, on most people. So you have a high percentage of vaccinated people. So they can go ahead with attempting to have a semblance of carnival. Trinidad is going to do a similar thing. They are going to have a carnival of vaccinated people in a bubble, which pretty much is the model that exists on the Bayfront, according to Richie. But um, it depends on where you are at the time. I don't think it's something that can work very, very well in Dominica, although the Bayfront is not as large as we would ideally like. It's pretty, it's not, it's, it's, it's a pretty small venue when you think of what the magnitude of Carnival itself. So maybe something can work there, but it will not be the, in the true sense. The expression will not be it will not be the fully expressed carnival like we Dominicans are used to. We are noted for. We are, our Monday and Tuesday, nobody goes to work except your if, if you're uh, an important, um, for instance, you're a policeman or a nurse or, or something. You know, you have to go to work. But most people, it's a holiday, and and in, even in islands like Saint Lucia, just there, the, the carnival Monday and Tuesday is not a holiday. You know, so we have we have a culture of existing. Our carnival expression is like a fully expressed thing. You know, we wake up in the morning and we are all about carnival and the food and the and the drink and and the dress and everything for two full days. And I don't think the Bayfront can give us that opportunity. And I also want to say too that we have to understand too that if we with the, there's a new variant which we call the Omicron mm -hmm. or Omicron, Omicron. Or something, there's a new variant about, and I don't think it's very far from our hemisphere. As a matter of fact, there have been word that it was it's in Martinique. I mean, that's probably just a rumor still. But at the same time, we have to understand that if this thing explodes in Dominica, do we have the capacity to contain it? Can we manage a situation where there's an outbreak of a much more advanced variant of COVID-19? So I think with all of that, I am for the idea of keeping the celebration contained, tightly contained, or not at all. Just have the shows happen online you understand like some people have yeah. tried before even calypso association we had a very successful season last year online mm -hmm. with a very small audience of about 150 people that included our calypsonians you know so if that can happen it can it can you know we can still have our carnival in a different format at least for now until we can have a, a, a sort of firm enough grip of the covid 19 situation and i want to piggyback on a point that richie made again that I too don't think that COVID nineteen is going to go away. Oh no, it's it, not it, going it, anywhere. It, right, it's a, it's an it's an influenza. It's a flu, and it's something that we have to learn to adjust to, vaccinated or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you know we have to learn to 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 deal with it. We have to learn to train ourselves not to get it, because mm -hmm. the most important thing that prevents you from getting it is wearing the mask. Physical distancing, I don't say I'm social distancing. I think we socially we need to come together. But physical distance and sanitizing. And I think mm -hmm. once we can get used to that, make that part of our everyday life, our, our, our ins and our outs, we wake up and we go to bed, making sure that those three steps are part of our life, then we will see a change. Mm -hmm. But, but COVID-19 wanna... is, not, is not going to go away, no. Already. Oh, no, that's why I, I keep doing these programs yeah. and I keep stressing that we live in a COVID-19 world, a COVID-19 reality. But Ra and um, DJ Rio, I want to come to you guys because I agree with Bob that, you know, our carnival is a whole other level. But given the situation that we're in right now with COVID-19 that is not going anywhere, I do think that having a model uh, such as the Christmas village that we are now seeing in Dominica, I think that if it, we are allowed to, to have that model for the Christmas village, why not use it for a, a, an opportunity 
to give the entertainment, give DJ Rio a chance to play one day, then next week have another DJ, the next day have another DJ. So we rotate it. So it is an opportunity to put income into the pocket because we're already using the model, right? So we're already having the Christmas village. Why not just use the same model and do a carnival village? And the concern as Bob brought up the Omicron um, variants, is that we're inviting the folks on the cruise ships to be a part of this Christmas village. And we know that many of them are coming from the U.S. where potentially they could be exposed. But our carnival in general is usually the folks on the ground. So I'm just kind of weighing the options because I'm just thinking if it is possible to have a Christmas village, why not use the same model and have a, a carnival village that rotates the entertainers rotates the vendors so now we have the opportunity for all these other industries that we talk about to be able to get a piece of the pie dj rio Ra, thoughts well my thoughts on that have been i would say carnival 2022 it would be a good thing and at the same time it would be a bad thing it would be a good thing for us entertainers to get money into our pockets have live shows, be at a venue playing. And on the other hand, you have the health aspect of it and the new variant. So you try and limit that. So you go virtually or as you'd say, limit the amount of people at the show, at the venue. But with the Christmas Village, I'm actually on there every Fridays. So oh, good. Yes. That's excellent. Yeah. Yeah. And mind you, I'm not saying one or the other, right? I'm saying we use both, both the virtual and the carnival village. Ra, any thoughts? Well, that one is a very, very tough one as it is, because as you know, the whole thing is going to change and we need to, to move along with the change because as you know, COVID not going to go away. I don't know why people believe as if, well, you know, you get vaccinated and everything, you know, is a, a match made up in heaven. I don't think it's like that is going to happen. I think it's a whole readjustment. As Bob was saying, our carnival is unique. So I don't know if I'm taking it and making it for the tourists and, you know, it's a tourist carnival. I, I really don't know what's the idea because already we start to move to that kind of a tourist kind of a thing because we already changed our whole carnival um, setting, meaning that what we used to do on Monday, we did on Tuesday. What we used to do on Tuesday, we did it on Monday. And you, to me, personally, that is a whole confusion. I don't know who come up with that kind of a brilliant idea as they think it was. But and to me, Monday supposed to be costume and everything. Tuesday, we get into last lap and stuff like that. Because Monday supposed to be the juve, take it out. And after, take it from there, after we do the juve, you have the costumes coming out, everybody come up with their feather and their, their little um, tops and their bottoms and stuff like that and everything outside. Let's go on their feathers. All right, fine. And the, the Tuesday, we know it is when the, the gangs, which we call gangs before, you know, people like Archies and Fantastics and, you know, um, all the different groups and stuff like you used to come out on Tuesday, people come out with their outfit. And so, so that whole thing has changed because now we bring that kind of a, a stuff of, um, the costumes on the Tuesday, to me, really and truly, like you put the cat before the horse. Anyway, going forward now, we're talking about we're doing a carnival for, for tourists, because for the tourists... Well, not boat, necessarily for tourists, just using the model of the the, the Christmas village, which no, includes the, the tourists. So yes, we're not doing the carnival them, for the tourists, them. but it right. includes them. Right, no problem. Right. But no, the way it is there, well, from what I see growing up there, slowly but surely, is like as if, well, look at the tourist boat, look at the carnival, and okay, that's it. To me, our carnival is unique, and that is what the, the tourist um, board or whatever they call them, DFC or whatever the fancy names that they have, was pushing the uniqueness about our carnival. Because it's different from Trinidad, it's different from anywhere else, right? And I think that's what we should keep, our uniqueness in our carnival. Mm -hmm. So now the carnival story is one thing. Meaning that the shoe 
that we want to change the carnival a little bit, make it like a carnival village or almost like what they have the Christmas village and stuff like that. So now what we have to do is to see how we could um, tailor that to mm -hmm. suit the kind of a situation that exists right now, the kind of a environment, the kind of a situation that exists. Because now, I mean, we know what carnival is. You want to hold up a chick, you want to wind up, you want to think. Sometimes you don't even know the person you want to do. That's not going to happen again. Everybody, if you sneeze, before people used to say, God bless you. Right now, when you sneeze, everybody watching to say, but who do that? Who do that there? If you cough and think, people say, hey, wow. But now, <laughs> when you cough, everybody watching you as if, boy, you know, you have some kind of a problem. So now the whole thing is changing us. So we have to really look and see, because I myself will have all the answers, how mm -hmm. we're going to go back. Because to me, that whole thing is a whole economic reshuffle that's going on there. The way Absolutely. we do banking, the way we travel, the way economics go in, you know, the, the whole thing changed. So we have to see how we're going to readjust with that. I mean, I don't know if Dominica in a unique po position because now every place, everywhere else, like places like Barbados and St. Martin, Trinidad, Jamaica, all these places that used to be really booming on tourism in that kind of a way, they have a serious halls because now the planes on them not moving like before. The, the tourist boats not moving like before. So now the tourist industry now under a serious kind of a, you know, I don't know if it's siege or how you may want to call it. So now we have to retail, you know, the way we do things. We, for instance, you know, I have to get Aqua with the whole data thing. And you made the mm -hmm. point again now, what about those that don't even have internet or don't even know what is a computer or have a smartphone, you know? So now the whole thing have to change and is a, re-education and stuff like that to be able to deal with that because now we didn't change it but you know somebody somewhere changed that whole thing the way business is done because now it impact as we were talking about the musicians and them before fellows you could do all their cds and go and sell they change that moving from cds to flash drive to know youtube and all YouTube. those kind of a thing to um itunes and all those kind of a thing there so now it's moving at a real quick pace, you know? So we now have to see how we're going to, and as I said already, I don't have the answers and we have to seek. And as we know, we have to do some teamwork, you know, to right. see how we're going to readjust with that. So now talking about the carnival in that kind of a way there, yes, maybe we can do it for now, but now we have to get some people, thinkers and visionaries to see exactly how we're going to take it and how we're going to deal with the situation as is, you know, because as I tell you straight up, the way it is there, every time you're going to hear about a new variant. Before we saw the, um, the thing just after carnival, a flu happened, we, whatever you saw happen there, we call it different names, you know? Every, all of us remember that. If it was a mm -hmm. song, we call it after the song, or if it's a situation, mm -hmm. or if it's a slang, we will give it the name after that. So just like them guys there, they're into it now, they take over, but now in a more so sophisticated way. You know, yeah, right yeah, now it's Omitron before it was Delta. So I don't know if it was mm -hmm. the plane, Omitron. So I don't know if it's um, Transformers. So, you know, that's what's happening there. So now we into that kind of a vibe going on there. So now we ourselves have to place ourselves, you know, at an at, um, at advantage you now to be able to deal with the situation. Like Bob say, you know, it's team. And I think every one of us um, agree is teamwork, you know. It's teamwork. Yeah, we must, is, you know, yeah. we must do some teamwork because you have some people. They may be looking successful, but they have a team behind them. Even though you see like as if they're in the front, but they have a team behind them. And um, mm -hmm. as of lately, there, you know, I've I've gotten to understand that. Not that I didn't know it before, but I get to understand that even more clearly. And the way um, the whole digital, you know, vibe. Is, 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 is being used and executed and taken advantage of, you know. Again, you must have somebody that have the ideas on that. So, because there's where I see it going. It's all about digital now. The whole thing reform, you know. It reform, you know. When we talk about um, how things used to be happening before, it's not going to happen again. Because to me, that whole COVID thing, it has to do with the whole data business going on there.
you know? Yeah, and I think we can already see that the teamwork and the collaboration has begun with uh, everyone who's on the panel right here, not one person backed out at the last minute, so I'm very happy. But before we start speaking solutions and the way forward, let me, if you can invite uh, the listeners, uh, can Lambi hear us? If you can invite the listeners to call if they would like to make a contribution to the program. The numbers are 449 and there is someone on the line. Call up. Please go ahead with your call. Yeah, good evening, Lambe. Good evening, sir. Um, good evening. Good evening, Doc, and, you know, good evening to the brothers on the, pro on the program. Good evening. You know, I um I I do to hear all, all all these brothers and, and you know and this and sister the um you know the contribution. But what I think we um leave out of the conversation is the fault of Dominican musicians. We I hear the word about industry, industry. Dominica doesn't have any music industry. Dominica has musicians playing instruments and singing. Dominica doesn't have a music industry. You know? Um, uh, we, 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 there isn't, there, you know, this era in, in this pandemic, in all of its liabilities and all of those things, for musicians, apart from those outside gigs, people who have good music out there and good lyrics and are making tons of money in this pandemic. When, when you, when you sit down and you're writing songs strictly for Dominica, the, you know, you just on this hook thing, this whole era, for instance, of Triple K has been a total letdown in Dominican music, a total letdown. We went from having lyrics that were international, well-written, from the Gordons, the Jeff Joes, the, even Triple, even, even CK, Azura, awesome writing. Uh, you listen to the music coming out of Dominica, man, there's nothing you want to stream. The, the pe people are just making music for Dominica. So I, I think that there is a, there is a serious... Thing that needs to take place and it needs to take place in Dominica, organizationally, as, as Brother Bob said, organizationally. You have to have some writing taking place in Dominica, or, or people are just vacuous on writing for music. And you know, I'm, I'm not going to this a little more, but I'm saying the writing, if that writing doesn't step up, no matter what happens in this industry globally, Dominica's music is not going to go anywhere in the way it's supposed to go because people are not taking time to write good songs to good music in Dominica anymore. And that's how I feel about this entire thing. Peace and bless. Yes. Thank you, Carla. Uh, Thank Asma, you. As, a, as an up and coming, the, the, the youngest of the, uh, the folks here, the next generation, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think it could be improved. I mean, I cannot knock down anybody, but I just could say that it could be improved um the skills all the structure the song i think it could be improved you understand that's what i could say about that i mean it's mm -hmm. not bad it's not bad but it could be improved and with mm -hmm. with um with um the veteran writers you know they can come we can they can come together with the younger ones and just kind of work out something you yes any anyone else um simon i'd like to say something as well mm -hmm. okay uh, pertaining to what the caller said, that we, I, I feel like if I got him correctly, we are lacking professional, for professionals who really know how to maneuver through the industry. Because yes, he spoke about the quality of our products improving. I, I would agree with that. I definitely agree with that. I think, um, I don't see we have issues in making music. I see we have many, many, many artists or, well, entertainers, yes, for sure, but I'm speaking of musicians and singers now. I see we have many musicians and singers who are able to make the music. Um, definitely, we have opportunities to improve. We have to improve and align the sound, what the final product sounds like um, in comparison with an international artist who perhaps is singing similar genre or the same genre as what we want to we want to sing you know what we aspire to to to, to be known as so we definitely have to improve our product yes and secondly i must admit it is for me as an artist here locally 
it has been difficult finding someone who could really tell me you know you have um you have uh how do pr persons pr persons get you on magazines you know they get you on radio stations they get you on blogs you know and i'm talking i'm talking about local and international magazines blogs mm -hmm. and whatnot um i've also in this so so um, so this is what we've had to learn for ourselves how do we um market our products in a way that we use our limited resources because some magazines be asking for like 800 euro to put your story in there to promote your music some magazines marketing music is very expensive i've discovered that but I really have not been successful in in getting someone who is able to do that successfully here. And I'm sure we have we have people in Dominica who can do that. I'm just saying I haven't found one. And then there's mm. another issue of locating persons who can access outside um, international shows, right? Uh, so you have individuals overseas who you know artists here can literally hire. And these people can find international shows for you. And like I say, locally in Dominica, I'm sure there is an individual I can find who is able to access the outside because right now we have restrictions, guys. We cannot have the live shows. Okay, so can we have live shows in another country? What's going on in Florida? Can we be a part of that in Florida? But we need that access. We need that individual to get us those shows. I have not found one in Dominica. So therefore, mm -hmm. it, you know, I'm, as, a, as an independent artist, I'm forced to look out into the national arena. There are actually websites. <laughs> there are actually websites we have looked into to find professionals who can access concert shows and those things there, you know, all those little, we need those things, uh, you know, we need those professions perhaps being active in Dominica. Um, but for yeah. now, I find myself accessing it overseas. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Abby. I think we have another call, Lambie. Yes, yes, we do. Call up, please go ahead. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm listening to your program, which is very interesting. And, um, you know, from recent times, I, 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 I'm kind of, you know, disappointed with some of the, some of the composition of our local artists and local bands. All right. When you look, when we when we look at at, at um, hot 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 arrow, that song was recognized world over. All right, world over, hot hot hot, and that song of Bob Marley, Free Little Bird. I'm just making reference to these two songs, but there are many more songs that really hit the world market, international market. All right, and that is the page that our local artists and bands and groups should really pattern on because they're not really recording for only Dominica and St. Lucia and Grenada and Barbados. They should have to look at the world when, they, when, 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 when they're composing songs. Okay? And that is, and, and, and they, they, are taking a, they, are taking, they have taken a lot of time. I remember, well, when WC when they started, they had some very, very, very good songs that really hit the world market. All right? Suddenly it dropped. And of course, WCK is no more. Very, 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 very um, 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 disappointing. But, but the fact about it is that when they started, this is a band that was recognized, maybe not all over the world, but to a great extent. Okay? So composing music, writing music, and being a band is a great commitment because you are in there to develop yourself and to create a livelihood for yourself financially and economically. And if you're not serious about it, then you're going nowhere at all. And this is what is happening to many four bands. We must stop composing for only Dominica and compose for the international world. That is my advice to them. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that, uh, Carla. And, you know, I want to make sure we have some time to devote to actionable steps um, in, towards the end of the program. But I think we have another call, so let's take a call. On the overseas line, please go ahead. Yes, Mr. Lambie, good evening. How are you doing? I'm fine. And you, you, Simone, and, and all the guys on the panel there. Um, Simone, I just heard Zed call a while ago, and 
I've been listening from the start, and this sentiment of Zayn was part of what I was thinking about. Lyrics, melody, and how your music is arranged, because I would not say as far as we don't have an, uh, an industry, we may not have a big uh, uh, musical impact in the region like Trinidad or Jamaica or whatever, but like the young man said a while ago, it needs improvement. Lyrics and melody. Kara is sitting there with you and he has some of the bodies going on lyrics, but not. And that's like old school. But like they said, some of that music that's out there, no lyrical content, just a, a straight reading, no melody arrangement and musicality. But I would like to pick up Brother Bob for making some of the big points that he made earlier on as far as setting your goals high. Because music business is a very competitive uh, business. And you got to put on your A game. You got to aim high. This is why Jamaica and Trinidad dominate the region, because they set the bar high. Lyrically, musically, it is a place where the government in the region, like Jamaica, Trinidad, they invest money in culture. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you all tonight and all who listen to the radio. The government of Dominica don't care about you, the youth of Dominica and culture because they don't invest in culture. And I'm straight up with that. I remember the 70s. I'm from Penju, Grandma, uh, member exile, naked feet. All these guys were making waves outside of Dominica. So this is where you have to take your craft aim outside of Dominica because a prophet is never honored in his own land as the phrase goes. And when you make it big outside, then they'd be hungry for you to come in because they think the grass is green on the other side. They bring in foreign artists and put you all to the pasture. So aim high. Sharpen up your crop. Use this time now to do what you do and do it good, better, and be competitive. And before I go, let me say one thing. I heard a young man said one time on the radio, oh, them fellas from Trinidad taking the bouillon, they're going to take the bouillon from us. They're not going to take the bouillon from you. And, brother, that I show you that, that I learned. What he has done is take the bouillon to another level, and you hear in a lot of bouillon in soca, and you think it's soca you hear, but what you hear in is bouillon, because he has upped the ante. What that makes you do, you, it makes you become more competitive. It makes you get better on a higher scale. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you for that, um, Carla. And I just want to make sure we get to our actionable steps. But before we do, I think we recently heard about the 2019 audit. And I just wanted to get uh, some feedback from our guests tonight, because here we have all these huge sums of our loans being dispersed to various industries. But among those, I never heard any uh, being dispersed to any part of entertainment or industry. So if part of that money had been available to the entertainment industry, where would we have liked to see it go? Bob, you have any thoughts on that? Well, absolutely. I really want to respond to that because um, it was known publicly that I would have been at the center of... Um, part of some fund that was available at the at the aid bank and yes it was somewhere about one million dollars was placed at the aid bank so that musicians can apply for loans for multiple entertainment related um, um activities but here's what Simon. if you put money into a fund or an account whatever you say it's a facility for musicians to apply do you think it is fair that Applying for that fund would be the same as applying for any regular loan in the state that the music industry is currently. And it has been that way for a long time. Yes, COVID came and gave it a further blow, but you cannot treat the musician the same way as a guy coming for a loan to open a shop or to buy a car or to build a house. You know, you, the government has to should have absorbed some of that. And yes, it was a soft loan of about 2% or something like that, I believe. And you could acquire as much as maybe about $100,000. But the prerequisites 
were just over the top. You still had to come with land the title. You still had to, many of the musicians, they're not otherwise employed. They're home producing and waiting for to do shows and so on. So the music industry is a sort of, is a very pe peculiar type of industry, which cannot be treated as the construction industry. It must not be treated as the merchandise industry where people buy materials to sell, to build homes or whatever the case may be, or even the um, vehicular loans. It was treated in the same way. And as a result of that, I don't think one musician was able to, um, to acquire a loan from that fund. So yes, a fund was made available. I, I, I want to say it. I was approached to provide um, advice and so on, and also to do the promotion, to bring the word out to the musicians that this thing is available, go and take advantage of it. But when some, a lot of people went, I remember guys calling me back and say, but Bob, we cannot access. I say, yes, I know that even I cannot access it just the same. And that was the problem. So until we, it's as if they, 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 they put this sweetie right before your lips and you cannot take a bite out of it, you know? So that was the problem at the time. And unless we address things like that and understand that the music industry is a peculiar industry, it cannot be treated the same way. Because take, for instance, after Carnival, there's a lull. There isn't much activity. So you have to take that into consideration. And then things pick up in summer again. Then it drops in September. It picks up again in December. And but what type of activities? We do not have so much of a, a what we call a nightlife here in Dominica. So there isn't much activities for musicians can sustain loans. And 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 I have been a victim of that myself. I, I am still a victim of that, you know, acquiring loans to do music projects and so on. So um that has been the problem in Dominica. And it's something that I never even really got an opportunity to speak publicly about. It's the first time I'm actually saying that. But I'll tell you, I took a lot of slack for my name being at the helm of that thing, of that particular mm -hmm. facility that I myself could not access. Wow. And then, then there was a time when I said, okay, let me call it the aid bank and final. What's the latest on that? Is it still there? And he said, no, Mr. Bob, it's not there anymore. <laughs> so it's no longer available. No, it's no longer available. So what became of the money now? You know, but that is the thing. They treat us as if we are the regular run of the mill business and you, you you just can't. You know, so so that was it basically. And, yeah, and God, God knows when it will be available again. Right. Richie, I see you over there. I know you want to contribute something, so go ahead. Okay. Uh it it's uh, I am I am very much um boost with the situation that Bob just revealed. Um, uh, I, I don't know if I should name the association, but I will say that um, that, in, that in fact was the case. In fact, what I was told by one of the executive members of said association is that um, between he and I, he told me basically, and this is no disrespect to the financial institution, um, but the, the, that's exactly what they did. And also they were not trained in, um, how to approach entertainment Music. when it comes yeah. to lending, right? Um, the bank itself has no regulations as far as how do you work with an, um, someone in the entertainment industry in finance, there's nothing, there's <laughs> There's, there's, there's no protocol, there's, there's no grace period, there's nothing. Uh, so it was, so they took a model from the list of models that they have, if you're a construction worker, if you have a permanent job, or they would deal with that type of person. They just took that and they tried to put that into, into entertainment, but no. Um, and the entertainment industry has to be treated um, separately with specific regulations and protocols when it comes to finance um, and a grace period has to be attached to that it's not just having a low interest rate you you cannot expect because you you i think also too what you told me i don't want to mention names what he told me too is that um based on his training because he did enter he studied entertainment law um based on his training that the the bank itself would have, I don't know if it's the loans officer or some separate officer, they have to work with the, the applicant to either, you know, fix up their, their plan, whether you call it a business plan or, or the, the, the outlay 
of how they plan to, to make back the money and their budget and all of that. Work with them on that um, to make sure that the, the plan that the artists have or the guy who wants to start a, a, a booking agency, because that's something that I think Dominica needs as well, a, a PR committee or a PR a consulting agency, I think Dominica needs that as well. Um, uh, they would set up the plan and make it foolproof with you. They would have a one-on-one -on -one with you. You understand? Daryl would be able to, to expound on that a little bit. But um, they would make it foolproof and then give you the money because they want you to succeed as well and they want you to pay them back. You know, but not that, that too is not in place because unfortunately, they don't even have the knowledge of how to again go about on lending in the entertainment industry, the know-how of how to help an artist with a business plan or, or set up a foolproof plan to make sure that the money comes back. It's just, it's just nothing. So that happened and um, I too, I applied and I brought my plan. I remember speaking to Daryl about that and I brought my plan through the training that I did with the, the association and everything and my certificate. And um, the woman, she looked at it when I came at the bank and she was like, um, yeah, this looks good. Um, but what she told me at the time is that the money wasn't there yet. I don't know if I went too early, but um, she told me it wasn't there. And then through following up, following up, following up, I realized that no one actually was able to 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 get from that because either either i don't know they 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 didn't come with a good enough plan but even when you did even in my case and even in bob's case um nothing worked out you know so again it, it it's i don't want to go there but it comes into what we what i started saying in the starting of 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 this forum this virtual forum um that th there's no environment you understand in dominica to facilitate advancement in entertainment it's either you know someone in america or you know someone in england or for some family connection or that partner is your boy that's partner is your boy he in charge with some big he working in some big um label in sony or whatever so he can just book you up and just bring you up it's like if you personally don't know someone already for yourself in the industry that's already big, that can just take you and go and leave Dominica, is Dominica itself does not have a, a base, a platform to say, yo, we can train you in X, Y, Z, A, B, C, get you up to level four. We need to get to level 10, but we can bring you up to level four. And this is what we can do for you. And bam, so at least when you leave Dominica, you was already at level four. Your country was able to do that for you or open that way, that door for you. Or you could work with that, that label that Dominica has for two, three years that would get you to a certain level of um, exposure regionally. And when your contract expires, uh, you can choose to go independent or sign another contract with a bigger label. There's nothing like that. You know what it is? So um, it, it goes back to that. It goes back to that, that lack of, that lack of, I think. Of a true industry, you can say it. Yeah, it goes back to it. It ties into it. So I, I that's a classic example of why I, I started the conversation saying that we need to do better. Even if we, we don't want to put, you know, too many of the millions into to, to getting an, a full industry running, but set it up to a point where, you know, the, the artists and the entertainers can reach a, le a certain level, you know, a level four. You need to get a level 10, but get us to level four through, through providing reasonable opportunities for training, um, for exposure. There's, I see no reason, and I, I don't want to call his name, but I see he, he and I, we had a conversation. He's very well known, and um, he, he was saying that he sees no reason why Dominica shouldn't have two or three expos a year. There is absolutely no reason for the Ministry of Culture that we cannot have expos done to expose um, our artistic um, talent. Mostly the, the Ministry of Trade. The Ministry of Trade, they, they, they're the ones coming and, and actually do right. trade. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah, I and, see and the guys use the, uh, use the affiliations with the other ministries in the region. Bro, it can happen, you know, it's just that nobody is really thinking of it, but all of the governments are, are, are co uh, they're related, they're connected, and, and their ministries do work together. As a matter of fact, we have situations where governments take loans from other islands, you know. Um, so I don't see why, if there's something really good happening, if St. Lucia has a better, a better industry, entertainment industry, we cannot collaborate with them through all ministries of trade or ministries. Those are the ministries that are, that, that, that they, they, for instance, in Trinidad, you have a lot of um, activities going on down there. There's Carifest, um, Dom, no, not Dom Fester, but there's um, this thing that happens every four years, but that is done through the Ministry of, of, um, of Community Development and, and, and Culture. You mean Carifesta? Carifesta, right. That is done through, through, through culture. So yeah, if, if, no if they can problem. come just for one activity, they can come together when they are, because in, even in St. Lucia, there's a lot of training opportunities for small business, even in entertainment as well. So we can yeah, that's, work that's together. They can work together, but yeah. I don't think anybody is seeing those things as important and things that they can do. Well, you know, and I also I, think, I also think, you know, the government has a responsibility to its people, but I also think we have a responsibility to, to ourselves and what can we do despite not having national policies, which is the premise of this program? What can we do within our own circles and our own groups and organizations to move the, to move the bar forward, to move the conversation, to, to get into the uh, action? So as we get what, what, prepared for uh, actionable <laughs> steps, uh, Simon, I wanna... <laughs> Simon, we have a... We have a cultural advisor, you know. We have an ambassador who is a, who's supposed to be a cultural ambassador, cultural mm -hmm. advisor to the government. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but, but, if, but yes, <laughs> but but in the in the meantime, while that is not working, do we sit and wait? Because I get the sense we as Dominicans, we're always <laughs> sitting and waiting for something. I'm not a very patient person. I don't like to wait on people who are not doing what they're supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> So, 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 so speaking of solutions, DJ Rio, I want to come to you because I know you guys recently had a meeting and did anything productive come out of that? Any actionable steps that is going to be put forward to, to create a sustainable plan? I'm not talking about a stimulus package where you put a bandit on an open wound and then it festers, but a sustainable visionary plan for the entertainers of Dominica? Did anything come from that meeting? No, not really, but the government looks to take it to virtual, a virtual level. So mm -hmm. we do so virtually. Mm -hmm. Should set aside some funding towards virtual, doing virtual events. That's basically it. And when is that going to begin? What is that going to look like? What platform is that going to be on? Well, for now, I, that I do not know for now. So until the next meeting. All right. So we're right back to waiting. So, so the good news, I think, because like Bob said, you know, I think sometimes we get stuck in what's not happening and we miss the opportunity. So I think a number of us have already hinted to the opportunities that are available. And I know many times we hear the DJs and the performers say that they don't like the, the virtual um, audience. But again, COVID-19 is here to stay in some way, some form. So are we going to continue to sit and wait while people suffer from no income? Or are we going to try to find ways to tweak the virtual environment so that it becomes more of a, a you know, an engaging, exciting experience for both the performers and the audience? And one of the things I've been doing behind the scenes is I recently collaborated with um, the with Mr. Glenn Bannis from the Houston Afro Creole Music Festival, and you will be very happy to know that Mr. Glenn Bannis's Facebook page has over a hundred and forty-one thousand followers. So, so think of this with in regards to the population of Dominica and how many times the population of Dominica goes into that number. Right. So with the collaboration of Mr. Glenn Bannis and Push Past and Push Past then we have about uh, 20,000 visitors. So now we are looking at an audience of about 160,000 people. Right. So here I'm looking at you guys. We have the talents. 
we have the audience. If we can get some sponsors to create an income for our entertainers, what are your thoughts on that? Based on everything that we've, di we've, dis we've discussed this evening, all the solutions, because I have been writing down everything that we're talking about, taking it to the virtual audience of 160,000 people, getting sponsors, get an income for anyone who's willing to perform, um, hopefully for Carnival and beyond, creating a sustainable plan. Because I think that is what is lacking in these conversations. We have these wonderful conversations and then we all go back to our corners until the next time we come around to have this conversation. So what do we do with this audience, this talent, the technology for Carnival 2022 in the short term and for the entertainment industry in the long term? Bob? The, the idea yeah. of, yes, the idea of, um, you know, partnering with, with guys who have huge followings is a very good thing. We have to start with um, our craft. Um, Ajmal indicated earlier that COVID-19 allowed him to spend more time inside and to develop his craft a little more. I think that happened for most of us and we need to continue doing that. So until our, 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 the quality of our output is improved, we can take it to the international community because even guys are very close to us, Barbados, St. Lucia, even St. Lucia lately, and Trinidad and Jamaica, the quality of their music is, is so much at a high level that we ourselves cannot compete. They master in professional studios in Europe and the United States. And, um, and that, that impacts the quality of their music tremendously. So this is, this is something that we need to take seriously. Mastering is now available to everybody and it is, it is pretty affordable. I hate to use the word cheap, but it's very affordable. And we need to do that with our music. And we will, as we move along, we'll get advice as to how to improve on, on our tones, how we can use more authentic to make the music sound larger and really take advantage of stereo. So those are things we need to do first of all, and then we can put it on that large platform with, with the Glenn Bannises. I mean, Glenn Bannises with one, 100 and something thousand, 140 a day about thousand. It's still a joke compared to the guys in the French territories who have right. so much more than that. Mm -hmm. So collaboration again, you know, mm -hmm. um, but let us work on, on improving the quality of our output. And, um, and then we can, if we put it on there, we will see some results and we have to be prepared for, for maybe, I don't want to use the word backlash, but this something is going to come back. There's going to be a wave that will come back. We have to be prepared for it because when we get called for doing performances, we have to be prepared to appear on the international stage. So Absolutely. I hope we're thinking ahead. I hope we're thinking mm -hmm. ahead. And, um, and let us embrace the virtual platforms, man. Let us just do stuff. Let us continue producing and continue have, making events that we all can appear on and have our fun, you know, an hour, you know, 45 minutes and doing it regularly is important, you know. Mm -hmm. Let's try to make it affordable for ourselves so that we can be sustainable. And by doing so, people will contribute, you know. I, I think um, I think Carnell and Cornell are doing pretty well for themselves um, just by contributions because they have been consistent. So I would really like to see, when I look at the combination of Ra and his son, I looked at them on the Miguel Labadi show. I also watched them on, on, the, um, on the show, the Mask Camp show. I think that is a product right there. And it's a homegrown product. It's a homegrown product, really in the true sense of homegrown. It was, it was developed at their homes, a father and son. And I want to endorse it here openly in the public that it's a good product. There's very good chemistry between the two of them. And they need to move forward with that by being consistent and always, I want to see more of their faces on social media. So it's those little things that really matter. You know, we don't have to look for big, big things yet. Yes, you have to think big, but you have to crypto it. It's step by step, you know, so. Those are the little measures that I think we need to take right now and embrace the platform as much as possible for us to see a result. And it could happen so quick, you'll be surprised. In 10 months, you will be amazed at what Ra and his son could become. But it mm -hmm. has to happen with new music, quality music, and consistency. And consistency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's go around the room. Thank you, uh, Bob, and thank you for being here. So let's go around the room. Final thoughts. We have about uh, two minutes left. 
So let's just get some final thoughts now that we have the audience, the technology, the talent. Where do we go from here? Ra? Well, as I rightfully said there, you know, um, we did that stuff there and I could see the change um, and the movements and stuff like that. And he, he be a witness to when we did that performance uh, at the mass camp, you know. Uh, of course, we did we did um, one of late there for uh, the Catholic um, organization. They were doing some stuff for some guy that has some medical issues. And we went there also. So we into that. And I see really and truly there's way that happening there um, with the virtual thing and using the data and using the technology because it's, that's what I see um, mm -hmm. we need to use and use effectively, you know. So um, I want to big up Bob for, um, you know, seeing the vibe and endorsing it and strengthening it. And that is what we need to do to support one another. Because a lot of times people doing things and they ain't getting no support. They see the product is good, but they don't put their weight behind it. So now he putting his weight behind it, that means a lot, you know? And we putting our weight behind what they're doing, like in Mass Camp, because my son is all right um, working with um, Mass Camp too. Uh, of course, he did, doing the, the, the production for people like um, Colson T, mixing, mastering, producing. You know, even with Richie, he start doing some stuff with Richie. So Richie, I don't know if I let the cat out of the bag, but Richie has been <laughs> coming, coming in and doing some stuff there. So no, um, that's that's what we're looking at. You know, working with um, a lot of artists. You know, and that's that's where I see his talents is. You know, you have that talent apart from you know you have this little band by say you know so and, you know you really need to you know work with some other artists because the way you can produce. You know, yeah. I mean, you would done thing for Colleen and stuff like that. And, you know, names I can't even know. I can't even, you know, you, you have to let me know exactly because you're moving at a quick pace. So now days where we are with a, with, a, with a whole thing, we have to move because it's all about data and the digital age. And Absolutely. That, that, that is what it is, you know. So the, the, mm -hmm. the whole thing has changed. The industry has changed and we have to adjust to it and yeah. um, use the social media and all the rest of it so to me that's where i see the the whole vibe going i mean apart yeah. from that you have the government promising and making us lodgy but it's okay you know yeah. we have to do what we have to do you know the loan is telling you it's there when you go for there you cannot access it but i don't know if it's deliberate or whatever but to me i feel it have a little deliberate kind of a vibes in there because now yeah, i mean it um after the hurricane there was that situation where i don't want to take too much time where um you know, the funds were supposed to be available. Then they say, no, it's not available. They use it for something else. And, you know, so we're doing that back and forth. Look, you just talk about the other uh, meeting again. They invited who they wanted to invite. And, um, you know, the money is there. It's not there. It's supposed to be there. And, you know, so we have to support one another and push the industry. So that's my little five cents, two cents, or how much sense you can check it Yes, out. thank you, Ra. <laughs> that's a million dollars worth of information. We appreciate you. DJ Rio, your final thoughts? My final thoughts for the music industry. I see the way forward. We may not like it, but it's virtually to prevent the spread of the COVID-19. But it's not the way that the preferred way for the entertainers, but it's gonna be that way. And once if we could make an income from it, then we'll welcome it. Because mm -hmm. that's the bottom line. Thing. I say, you know, you got to go to a nine to five job. <laughs> well, well, we'll try to make sure we can assist you in that. Uh, Ajmal, I forgot to ask you about the Buyo uh, Kitchen Studio. So in your final thoughts, tell us about that. Um, we are Kitchen Studios. We offer mixing and mastering, also produce. We also produce. Um, we have done work for, as my father mentioned, we don't work for Colton. I don't work for Carly next week. I don't work for Triple K. I don't a lot of work. So you can um you can follow me on Instagram, Skyobits767. That's S K Y O B E A T Z seven six seven. Or you can um you can also follow me on Facebook, Ashmar and Peters, if you want your quality producing and your professional mixing and mastering. Yes, Good, I like that. I like sell yourself because you know, anytime you have an opportunity to be on a show like that, it's an opportunity to sell yourself. Richie, final thoughts. Okay. Um, in terms of um actions, I just there's not much time, so I just focus on that. 
in terms of um, what actions can be taken to advance what we have in the entertainment industry um, without the need of government. Um, collaboration. Um, there needs to be a pooling of resources and skill set. Um, for example, Rio may have, I'm just, just saying, Rio may have serious contacts, let's say, in, um, in Europe um, as it relates to PR um, and, and that kind of stuff. Ajmal with the producing, let's say, Ra has a, a popular blog and we're all Dominicans or related in, in some way to Dominica. Um, we pull our resources together and we create, uh, quote unquote, uh, a foolproof team. And the purpose of that team is putting egos aside. And that is a problem that, that Dominicans, I think, with, even within the entertainment industry, have a serious problem of putting egos aside and, and looking at the big picture and how to get there and understanding that, yes, they will get the, the, the portion of the pie as well. And it's, it's a good thing to share. We actually learned that in Great K, that sharing is caring. And um, I think I, my people need to understand that simple um, principle of life, sharing is caring. Um, but um, yeah, we, we, we need collaboration and um, joining off skill set in a very strategic way. Um, to, to really get some serious results because it is possible. And every day when I look on social media, and th there's this comedian, um, not to stray, but his name is Country Wayne. This guy started- I know with, him. When I tell you this guy started with nothing. Wow. This guy started with nothing, but he was consistent. And within his community, he get people with different skill sets and they saw the vision he had. And all they did was pull their resources together. You know, you know where this guy is right now. Mm -hmm. He's driving a Bentley. Mm -hmm. He owns two homes. And and the team, the whole team is making bread. That that they didn't start out like that. That happened within two years. How do you explain that? They didn't have any government assistance. So, you know, egos need to be put aside. Fellas need to get serious, women too, and um, join the skill set. Be, be true Dominicans to each other, man. Love each other, man. Because if all of us eating is a great thing, we wouldn't need government or, or whatever. We wouldn't need, trust me, we'll be fine. Our fans will take care of us very well. But mm -hmm. um, <laughs> until we don't understand that, we ain't going to reach anything. Yes, thank you, Richie. Thank Last you for that. Point. So if you want to follow DJ Rio, you can follow me on Instagram, DJ Rio Loader, on Facebook, DJ Rio Loader, and you can follow my YouTube channel, DJ Rio 767, on YouTube. Yeah, and speaking of which, we're also looking for someone who knows how to, uh, to monetize those views, because I reached out to someone trying to monetize the views that, you know, for example, DJ Rio gets something like 60,000 views on a video. Right. And he's seen, sitting not making any money on that. But, you know, like I said before, there are people who are simply not willing to be a part of the collaboration, not willing to be a part of the team, not willing to share their knowledge and their experiences. And that's OK. They have a right not to want to be a part of the, the team if they choose not to. But we're still going to move forward and figure out things. So if anyone knows how to monetize the views on YouTube, please, please, please send me an email pushpast10 at gmail.com, P-U-S-H-P-A-S-T, the number 10 at gmail.com. Or if you just want to share other information that we may be missing out on for this program, Abia, I don't want to forget you as we wind down the program this evening. Yes, thanks, Simone. Um, by the way, monetizing on YouTube, you mm -hmm. will need 4,000 viewing hours within a year, and um, you need about above a thousand subscribers on your channel. So it's a combination of having 4,000 hours, viewing oh. hours on YouTube, plus having a thousand subscribers. But so it's the, also limited to the so countries. Fast, yeah. There's some countries that are not, that are out of the equation. And I think Dominica is one of them, but somebody in Dominica 
has figured it out. I reached out, but they refused to share the information. <laughs> really? Yeah, so yeah. There, are, there are actually third party third party agencies that we can use in order to get our money to the maker. So that's you're right, right Simone. That's a that's a question where you need to figure out who's that third party company to get the money from YouTube. You're right. But yes. with my contribution, I just want to say a way forward definitely collaboration but it has to make sense the collaboration has to make sense you understand i'm collaborating mm -hmm. with a bass player in dominica and i also have a, a bass man in jamaica we our keyboardist is from poland we met him online you understand our drummer is from turkey we met him online so we we have another drummer in Dominica that we work with as well, who's who's doing live drums on some new music I'm coming up with. So the collaboration has to make sense and it has to be beneficial for all parties. So definitely, yes, collaboration. We need to think internationally. We have an artist, Nasio Fountain, who has achieved reaching international standard. He has sold millions of copies, platinum selling artist, Nasio Fountain. If he could have done that in his time, Imagine what we can do now. It's just, yes, the collaboration, but with whom? Collaborate with the PR people. Trust me, you can go on Instagram and you can probably try to find out um, PR personnel or, um, you know, public relations personnel. You can Google public relations companies. It just, you just have to really reach out as far as you can go and think internationally. Marketing your product is key. We have the products, though they, yes, a lot of our products definitely need improvements, but we have the products. We have to market them. It takes money to market. It takes resources to market. Uh, that's how we know telephones. That's how we know brands of phones. Not true. We see the ads on TV. We see the ads on the billboard. On billboard in Dominica, I only saw, I've, I've seen Colton T. You know, he, he released his EP and he marketed his, his EP on a billboard in Dominica. I would have loved to see more artists get on board. My team, you know, me, myself and my husband, we also have our plan on how we are going to market and we're moving as, as much as our resources. Trust me, it's expensive, but we have to think internationally and we have to market internationally. That's where the money is going to come from, guys. That's where yes. it's going to come from. So Go we have to think Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So, I mean, um, yeah, I just, I just, I just want to say that, and and those of us who can use the social media, or we have people around our setting who know, who are knowledgeable on social media. Uh, we don't have to put our photos. We can put, you know, videos of ourselves promoting the songs or whatnot. Use our people around us, and use people that we can find, we can connect with, even overseas. Yes. Um, I was gonna say yes. Yeah. So, so this is basically it. If you all want to continue to listen to some quality reggae music, I'm releasing two songs this weekend, one on Saturday, one on Sunday. Um, you can definitely check out Abia Yisrael, A-B-I-Y-A-H, Abia Yisrael. Connect with me, Instagram, Spotify, guys. Now Spotify has opened up to Dominica and the rest of the Caribbean. Let us not forget that Spotify is a streaming site. Google Spotify for those of us who do not know. YouTube, what is Spotify for those who do not know? And understand how Spotify works. How do we put our music on playlists on Spotify? Maybe a Dominican artist has a team behind her and she's succeeding so well through the Spotify streams, hundreds of thousands of streams, our very own Mel C. I don't know if you know her, Mel C, Simone. She's I know the by, name. She now goes by Navy because she has a team or she has persons who have succeeded in marketing in various forums and Spotify is one of them. So wow. think internationally guys, think internationally and be consistent. We cannot have a product selling in 2022 and we produce that product since 2007. We have to be consistent with our music. How much music are you releasing? Or do you have access to this music? You need someone to mix? You go online, find out who mixes. There's a, a website, Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R, -R. Fiverr. Mm -hmm. You understand? F-I-V-E-R-R, -R. Mm -hmm. many, a range of musicians on there. That's how I got my label in the, you understand? That's how I got my drummer. That's how I got my bass guy. So, and for little, little money, some of them charge five US per song. Some of them charge 20 US per song. You understand? And they, are, they play so well. 
So let us do that, guys. And I look forward to connecting with each and every one of you, even within this forum here. I respect everyone within this forum here, and and I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Simone. Yes, yes, thank you. And I think we we got such great lessons. So I'm hoping we can continue this conversation and I can I'm hoping we can continue with our actionable steps because I certainly plan on taking advantage of the opportunity that Mr. Glenn Bannis has provided us. We've given us such an incredible audience. It's now a matter of the collaboration, the teamwork that we talked about, and getting our artists out of Dominica, thinking of Dominica without borders, because I've said it a million times that we we have to start thinking of Dominica. We have to break the borders open and take our talents, our culture, our entertainment internationally. So with that, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here. We did not get to the Facebook comments, but I've been known to be very good with acknowledging my Facebook um, um, audience. So Glenda, Carl, Kofi, Annette, Evelina, Rosita, thank you so much for being here and being a part of the program. Classic James, Rosalind, Anthony. Simon, Beverly, uh, Ivelyn Peltier, thank you so much for being here. Nixon Pear, Kay Grant, and everyone else who joined us. Nixie Alfred, Medina Senhouse, my mom, Abby Christmas, thank you for being here. And of course, David Joseph. So with that, Lambie, thank you for keeping us on the air. Thank you to the Q95 family, Mr. G, and the rest of the Q95. Thank you to our guests for being here. We truly appreciate your valuable contribution. And so we will continue the conversations. We will continue the actionable steps as we work towards concrete and practical solutions and we engage our experts at home and abroad. So I hope that you guys are ready to collaborate and do the teamwork that we talked all about. Everybody nod, say yes. <laughs> Bob, I didn't see you nod. <laughs> Well, you miss my nod, you miss my nod. <laughs> but just to tell your audience that um, Rough and Ready will be in New Jersey on the 17th of nice. December and in Houston on the 18th of December. 17th, New Jersey, 18th, um, Houston, Texas. And then back, we'll be in Miami on New Year's Day. Yeah. Yes, yes. So thank you, everyone. Let us stay connected. Let us get the work done and let us take our time into the work world. So with that, again, Simone Matthew, which we bidding you a good night and thank you for being here. This has been Roots Connections on Q right here on the big station, Q95. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lambi. Joe. Joe. Oh,